dear students, welcome to the grade 6 math class conducted by St. Peter's College, Kalamba 4, Nigambo branch. Today, we are going to learn lesson number 14, types of numbers and number patterns. Right. So, what, what do you mean by number patterns? Okay. Various patterns can be formed by whole numbers. Now, we know that there are various types of numbers, but you can't use decimals, fractions or any other, only whole numbers here. So, various patterns can be formed by whole numbers and they are having a special characteristics that they are going to repeat by a same kind of a pattern. Those are number patterns. Right. So, let's learn what are the types of numbers. Actually, children, there are seven types of numbers, but we are going to learn only six types of numbers according to your syllabus. So, even numbers, numbers which you are very familiar with, and then prime numbers, composite numbers, square numbers, triangular numbers, and rectangular numbers. Now, when I say rectangular numbers, it is a bit uh, confusing to you. I will be telling it at the end of this lesson. Okay. Even numbers and odd numbers are very familiar with you. I am sure that you have learnt it previously. In your previous grades in the primary classes. Right. Let's move on to even numbers. What do you mean by even numbers? Numbers that are divisible by 2 without any remainder are known as even numbers. That means children, now when you divide, when you take a number, you'll take 12. 12. Can you divide this equal into two groups? Yes. As 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. Therefore, you can nicely divide this into two groups. So these are evenly divided. Numbers which are divided by 2 without any remainder are known as even numbers. But there is a special thing. Children, 0 is also considered as an even number. What is that? 0. Can you divide 0 into two parts? No. See here. But numbers... Numbers are made with digits. You are well aware about that. And numbers, sorry, numbers where the last digit is 0 or multiples of 10 can easily be divided into two groups evenly. Get here. So 13, 15 plus 15 would make 30. Again, when we take 20, 10 plus 10 would make 20. So, these two ends with the zero digits. Therefore, if even if there is a zero, we consider that as an even number. Okay, let's move on to that. Now, as an example, we can say even numbers below 20. So, all these are even numbers below 20. Starting with 0. 0 is the smallest even number. From that, one after the other, in the sequence of numbers, we can nicely get all the even numbers. Okay. Let's move on to odd numbers. What do you mean by odd numbers, children? What are odd numbers? Okay. Numbers which always get a non-zero remainder are known as a non-zero remainder when it is divided by 2 are known as odd numbers. What do you mean by that children? Actually, now numbers, when you divide a number by 2, if you have a remainder, it is, if you have a remainder which is larger than 0, those are numbers. Now always, now when you divide the odd number, a number by 2, if you get one remainder at the end, in simple form we call them as odd numbers. 
Right. So what is the smallest odd number? One is number one is the smallest odd number. Now look at here. Write all the possible write all the possible odd numbers below twenty. One, three, five, seven, nine. Likewise, it goes. When you write the sequence, when you write the numbers in the order in the proper sequence, and if you take out all the even numbers, the leftovers would be the odd numbers. Okay, I think it's very clear with you. Uh, what? Okay. Right. One more thing, children. Now, even when you get, now, even when, when you get a number like this 13, now this is made with two digits. You have to look at the last digit. In the number. If the last digit in the number is an odd number, automatically the whole number would be odd. Now think about this 125. This is a large number made with three digits, but when you look at the last digit, since the last digit is an odd number, we can consider the whole number is an odd number. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. There are special facts to remember about odd numbers and even numbers. Let's go with little, uh, small, very simple calculations in order to understand these special rules. Now look at here. 1 plus 3. 1 is an odd number. 3 is another odd number. I hope it's very clear with you. So when you add two odd numbers together, the answer would be an even number automatically. So we can say when an odd number is added with another odd number, the result is always an even number. This you have to keep in your mind. Okay, the next one. We'll take a simple example. 2 plus 4. Right, now 2 is an even number. 4 is another even number. So when you add, when you add 2 and 4 together, the answer is 6. So that means when an even number is added with another even number, the result is always an even number. Is that clear? Right, let's move on to the next slide. Right, we'll go with another example. 5 minus or 5 subtracted by uh, 2 subtracted by 5. If not, 5 minus 2. Right. Now, what is 5? Five? 5 is an odd number. What is 2? Two? 2 is an even number. When you subtract an even number from an odd number, the answer becomes an odd number. Now, 5 minus 2 equals 3. Is that clear? That means when an even number is subtracted by an odd number, the result is always an odd number. Okay, let's go to the next one. 8 minus 2. Right, you are going to subtract an even number by another even number. Okay, look at here. When an even number is subtracted by another even number, the answer will always be an even number itself. 6 is an even number. Right, next one. We will go with another simple example. 3 minus 1. If you subtract 1, an odd number, from another odd number, the answer would be an even number. So when an odd number is subtracted by another odd number, the result is always an even number. Is that clear children? Right. Let's go with another example. 6 minus 4. You, when you subtract an odd number by an even number, the result is also an 
odd number. To catch your children, I'll repeat that again. When an odd number is subtracted by an even number, the result is always an odd number. Right. Now we were, we were discussing about addition and subtraction about these odd numbers and even numbers in different manner. But now we are going to consider multiplication about these. Right. Now 1 into 3. Right. Now 1 is an odd number. 3 is also another odd number. When you multiply an odd number by another odd number, the result will also always be an odd number itself. Look at here children. When two odd numbers are multiplied together, the result is always an odd number. Okay. Now look at the next example. Last one. 2 into 2. Right. Now 2 is an even number. So we are going to multiply two even numbers together. When you multiply an even number by another even number, the answer would always become an even number itself. So when two even numbers are multiplied together, the result is always an even number. Okay. Okay, children, before going to the next uh, section of the lesson, we are going to watch a video. I was exploring an enchanted wood. A wise fox started talking, I somehow understood. She asked, Please, will you join me beneath this pine? She whispered, For you, even numbers I'll define. They are 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Even numbers all share one tree. You can split them down the middle. If they make pairs, you've solved the riddle. Because 1 plus 1 equals 2. And 2 plus 2 makes 4, it's true. Then 3 plus 3 equals 6. And 4 plus 4 makes 8 big sticks. Numbers big and small. Today we're gonna count them. Please sit with me and be my guest. And I'll take the time to show you how to tell which numbers are odd. We looked at the fox and she gave a sly nod. The first five odd numbers in line are 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. They are not divisible by 2, and for all odd numbers, the same is true. Between 1 and 10, there are 5 of them. Now I'll count the odd numbers again. 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. They're every other number on the number line. Numbers big and small Today we're gonna count them all Some are even, some are odd Won't you join our counting squad? Then we were fed by a barn owl Perched outside his birdhouse on a dowel He said, please visit with me just for a short time and I'll discuss bigger, even, and odd numbers as I rhyme. Bigger numbers are even or odd too, and the last digit holds the clue. So what about the number 72? It's even because it ends in two. Or what about the number 93? That number's odd because you see, the last digit's the odd number three, which means it can't be split evenly. Numbers big and small, today we're gonna count them all. Some are even, some are odd Won't you join our counting squad? We wandered further into the wilderness An alligator appeared from the darkness G'day mates, I've got a special number to teach you For you must learn about zero before your journey's through 
Zero can't be split to make a new amount, but it's still even when you count. Cause if zero's a number's final digit, that number can be evenly split. For instance, consider the number 10. Let's split it in half and we'll see then. It makes two fives and that's a pair. If it ends in zero, an even number's there. Ha <laughs> ha! Numbers big and small, today we're gonna count them all. Some are even, some are all, won't you join our counting squad? Come on, join in! Numbers big and small, today we're gonna count them all. Yep, all of them. Some are even, some are odd Won't you join our counting squad? Numbers big and small Oh, think it's over. <laughs> Hi children, I hope that you have enjoyed the video clip nicely. So now we are going to go for an exercise. How to apply even numbers and odd numbers. Now in this exercise children, you have been given a list of numbers in the box. Now we are going to complete, we are going to fill the table based on these numbers. Right. Now you have in two cages odd numbers and even numbers. Now out of these, first we are going to mark them. We are going, first we are going to circle the even numbers and leave the rest. So, so automatically the rest would be applied to odd numbers. Right. So 22 is an even number because the last digit is an even number. 12 is also an even number. Right. 13, no. 10. 10 is also an even number. 0 is also an even number. 40 is also an even number because the last digit is a 0. Then uh, all these are odd numbers. 64 is an even number. 100 is an even number. There are two zeros at the end. 8 is also an even number. That's all. Right. So we are going to fill the even numbers first. Right. So 22, 12, then 10, 0, 40, 64, 108. Okay. So the leftovers are odd numbers. 13, 25, 37, 47, then 59, 19, 5, 9, 1, and finally 3. So we have done this activity. Hope it's very clear with you. Okay. Now, now let's move to the next slide. Okay, this is another activity. This is another activity. You are supposed to Right, this is another activity. Now, earlier we were thinking, we were discussing about the calculation part. So now, without, shall look at here, without solving these problems, we are going to guess you have to write uh, after doing, after, um, without solving, after looking at this, you are about to write what sort of an expression, what is the result of this expression would be, whether it is an even number or an odd number. Right, now look at here children, 30 plus 15, 30 is an even number, 15 is an odd number. When you add an odd number into an even number, the answer would be an odd number. Okay. Shall we move on to the next one? 12 plus 22. Now, 12 is an even number. 22 is another even number. When you add 
two even numbers together, what would be the result? It would be another even number itself. So the answer here would be even number. Okay. So now here, third one. 11 minus 9. Now if 9 is an odd number, 11 is also an odd number. When you subtract an odd number by another odd number, the answer would be an even number. Right. The next one. Now, 12 is an odd, 12 is an even number, 19 is an odd number. Now you have to subtract an even number by an odd number. The answer is always an odd number. Right. Look at here children. Now, actually did we discuss about division earlier? No, we didn't discuss. But it's not there in your uh, lesson. But still, we are going to discuss that within the problem for your extra knowledge. Right. Now, first, first of all, before going for the division part, we are going to do the multiplication as since we discussed. So, you have to multiply 2 by 10 by 2. That means you have to multiply an even number by another even number. When you multiply an even number by another even number, the answer would always be an even number itself. Right, look at the next one. You have to multiply an odd number by another odd number. How do you do that? An odd number by another odd number. So, when you multiply an odd number by another odd number, the answer would be again another odd number itself. Now you have a problem here about division, right? When you have to divide an even number by another even number, the answer would be an odd number, even by even odd. Right, then odd by odd it is again odd. Fine. I think it's clear with you. Let's move on to the next slide. Right. Now children, we nicely discuss about odd numbers and even numbers. All those are very familiar with you. But now, we are going to start something new to learn. So, the third type is prime numbers. What do you mean by a prime number? Children, when a number is divisible only by one and by itself. When a number is divisible only by one and by itself, we consider them as prime numbers. Look at here. Now, if we take 11, how can you divide 11? You can divide 11 by 1 only, then by 11 itself. You can divide 11 by 1 and by 11. Can you divide 11 by another number? Without, by another number fully? No. So, 11 is divisible fully only by 1 and by itself, not, not by any other factor. Therefore, we consider that 11 is a prime number. So, prime numbers are, you now, as an example, list out all the prime numbers below 10. 2, 3, 5, 7. Okay. Can you take 1? No. 1 is not considered as a prime number. Okay. 2, when you divide 2, how can you divide 2? You can divide 2 only by 2 and by 1. Right? So 3, again by itself and by 1. 5 by itself and by 1. 7 by itself and by 1. Can you take 9? What about 9? Is 9 a prime number? Obviously, uh, can you divide 9 by 9? Yes. 
can you divide 9 by 1? Yes. Are there any other numbers to divide 9? Yes. By 3. When you divide 9 by 3, you get 3. Okay. So, 9 is divisible by 3 also. Therefore, can you consider that 9 as a no 9 as a prime number? No. You cannot consider 9 as a prime number because there is another extra factor, extra factor to divide 9. Okay. So, we are going to with this small uh, thing in your picture, with this small uh, query in your heads, let's move on to the next slide. Then you will find the answer for that query. Hi and welcome to this video which is going to find all the prime numbers to 100. So hopefully you'll be confident in knowing what a prime number is. A number that can only be divided by itself and one. So it has no other factors. Okay, so how are we going to start? Well, what we need is numbers up to 100. So here they are, number square, which is just every number from 1 to 100. And what we're going to do is draw out all the prime numbers. And the way to do this is to cover up any numbers that are in the multiplication table up to 100. Because all of those will not be prime because they will have a factor of whichever table they're in. Now let's see if we can make sense of that. So if you think about the two times table, which is basically all the even numbers, none of them except the number two can be prime because they will all have a factor of two. So what we're gonna do is work through each table until we've done all the tables two to 10 and then whatever is left is gonna be prime. Now this might seem a tall order and will take a long time, but once we get going with it, you'll see that it really isn't such a big deal. Okay, so what we're gonna do is highlight every number in the two times table except the number two. And what you should find is it will look like this. It's basically every other number because every other number is a multiple of two. So two, we're leaving blank because we know it's prime. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 20, 16, 18, 20, etc., all the way to the hundreds. Now, we've already covered up almost half of the board. So we're gonna move on to threes and we're gonna start coloring in all the multiples of three but we're going to leave three because we know three is a prime number three can only be divided by itself and one so starting the table if you look you've got three six is already covered nine needs to be covered 12 already covered 15 needs to be covered 18 already covered 21 needs to be covered. So we can see another pattern going on here. Half of the numbers of the three times table will already be highlighted because they form part of the two times table. And this is all really good stuff to get your head around if you're having trouble with your tables. It's worth using number lines, number squares to 100 and doing colouring in one times table on each sheet so that you can see the patterns that form there. Okay, but let's look what happens when we do fill in all the three times table except the number three. And you can see there is a pattern forming there. We've got all these areas where we've got two numbers left, one underneath each other. And you can go through this slowly and check it as you go. Okay, so that's the three times table. Now, if we think about the four times table, we have four, eight, 12, 16, 20. We can see that they're already colored in. And if you think about it, 
The four times table is just every other number of the two times table. Again, a lot of the things I'm saying here may take you time to really get your head around, but that's fine. You can watch this as much as you need to. So we've actually done the four times table already. Every other number from the two times table is the four times table. Okay, so the next thing we'd have to look at is the five times table. Five can stay uncovered because it's a prime number. But if you have a look, the five times table is basically all of the numbers down this column, everything ending in five, and everything ending in ten. And the tens are already done because they are part of the two times table. So you can fill in this column and it should look like that. So we're now get, making real progress to finding our primes. Okay, the six times table, well guess what? The six times table is all covered by the two times table. Every number in the six times table will be an even number. Therefore, every even number is in the two times table, so it must already be covered up. So we really are moving fast. Okay, so the seven times table, which is a table that a lot of people do struggle with. Well, there will only be a few numbers to cover up here. So let's have a look. Seven, 14 is covered. 21, 28, 35, 42. So the first time we find one that needs covering is 49. Let's go onwards. 56, 63, 70, 77, so there's another that needs covering, 84, 91, there's a third, and 98. So let's cover up those. And what I've also done here is covered up one because we know that one is not a prime number. Okay, so all we've got left to look at now is the nine and tens table. And I think we can already see that the tens have gone. So let's just check the nines. We have nine, 18, 27, 36. Can you see a pattern here? 45, 54, 63, 72, 81. From 81, we'd move to 90 and then to 99. So in fact, we have covered all of the multiplication tables up to 100. And what you are looking at now is your prime numbers. I would really advise having a go at this. It will help you to see the patterns of the multiplication tables if you don't feel confident. And we have now drawn out all the prime numbers up to 100. Okay, have a go at this. That is the end of this video. Finding the prime numbers to 100. Composite numbers. Now, we learned prime numbers. The, the leftovers when you write the sequence of numbers from 1 to 100 and if you mark all the prime numbers together, the leftovers will be composite numbers. Let's learn what, is it, what it is. Right. Composite numbers. Right. Numbers which are having more than two factors are composite numbers. Now, previously we learned prime numbers, children. Prime numbers, we said, numbers which are divisible by one and by itself are prime numbers. Okay, so automatically, though we don't define the prime numbers as numbers with two factors, actually, automatically, the prime numbers are having two factors itself, but we don't define it like that. Okay, so composite numbers are numbers which have more than two factors. Right, let's go for an example. What about that number 9? It is divisible. This is divisible by 1, by 2, no, not by 2, sorry, by 1, 
by 3 and by 9. So the factors of 9 are 1, 3 and 9. Therefore, we consider it has now one extra factor. No? 1 times 9 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. And 9 times 1 is 9. So, 3 is an extra factor. So, it has more than 2 factors. That means 9 is a composite number. Okay. So, example, write down composite numbers below 10, 4. Can you consider 1? No. 1 is not either an one is not either a prime number and a composite number. Keep that in your mind very carefully. So, one is not anything, not there at all. Two, it's a prime number. Three is a prime number. So, four is the first composite number. I hope it's clear with you. Six years, eight years, nine years. What about ten years? It's a composite number. Eleven, no prime number. 12 composite, 13 prime, 14 composite, 15 composite. Likewise, it is going on. Okay. Now, children, we are coming for a we are coming for a small activity. Right. Exercise. Here we are going to circle only the prime numbers. Now I am I'm sure that. It's very clear with you what are prime numbers, you know it very well. So numbers which are, have, which are divisible only by one and by itself. Right, one. No, it's not either a prime number or a composite number. Five, yes, it's a prime number. Prime, four, no, six, no, twelve, no, two, no. Thirteen is a prime. Fifteen, no, ten, no. 17 years, a prime number. Uh, what about 21? Is it a prime number or a composite number? 21 can be divided by 3 and 4 also. So therefore, it is a composite number. Right. 19 is also a prime number. So there are only 4 prime numbers according to this exercise. Right. Children, now, you, are, you learnt about prime numbers and composite numbers. Before going to the next part of this uh, lesson, let's enjoy another video clip, a small activity about prime numbers and composite numbers. Okay. Now, We'll go for the rest of the exercises. Right. Look at question number four. Write all the possible composite numbers between 10 and 25. Composite numbers. Now, what are composite numbers, children? Numbers which are having more than two factors. Okay. Between 10 and 25. So, can you write 10? Can you write 25? No. You have to write what is in between. Okay. So 10 is a composite number but we don't write it because the question says between 10 and 25. So what is the next composite number? 12. Then can you take 13? No. 14. 15. Can you take 16? Yes. 17? No. 18. Can you take 19? No. 20. 21, 22, can you take 23? No, 24. That's all. Can you write 25? Though it's a composite number, you cannot write according to the given question. Okay. Next one. Now, actually children, these questions I took from the study pack. The lesson I, uh, the study pack lesson about the prime number, the types of numbers and number patterns. I have added these questions. I came up with the same questions because I think some of you might not be clear how to answer on your own. Right, so let's discuss this. What is the first odd composite number? What is the first odd composite number? Right, now composite numbers are numbers 
which are having more than two factors. You are know, you are well aware about that now, right? And odd numbers are numbers where they are, where it has non-zero remainder, where it, where it is divisible by two. Okay. Now, first odd composite. Now, what is the first composite number? As you are aware, that is four. Is four an odd number? No. Now we we'll just write down all the composite numbers and then we'll go for the answer here. Okay, so we we'll just write down, I'll write it here. 4 is the first composite number, 6 is the next one, then 4, 6, then 8 and then 9. When you consider this, is this odd? No, even. No, even. Even. But this is odd. So, what is the first odd composite number? The answer is 9. 9 is the first odd composite number. So, you don't write all these things. We can write only 9 as the answer. Hope oh, that's clear. Right. What is the first even composite number? Right, now you know the first composite number is 4 and it is the it is an even number. So what is the first even composite number? 4. Right. Next question. Write a pair of composite numbers whose addition is 27. Uh, now there is a small, uh, you have to think a bit uh, to answer the, this question children. Now, the answer should be two composite numbers, but when you add those two, the answer should be 27 also. We have to think of it. Right, let's guess some answers. Now, uh, can you take 8 and 2? 8 and 2 are composite numbers. Uh, 2, no, it's a prime number. So, we can take 8 and 4. If you take 8 and 4, it is 12. It is a small number. So 27 is a, la is a bit larger than that. So you have to think about a two-digit number as well. Uh, 12. Then what about 14? 14 and uh, 14 and 14? No. 28. So one is lesser there. It's not, it's not the answer. And what about 12 and 15? We just check here. You have to guess and get these children. 12 and 15. Uh, when you get 27. Sometimes there can be any other two numbers also. This is not only the answer. You can just check whether there are more composite numbers. When you add them, more uh, two composite a couple of more couples of composite numbers where you where you add them and get the answer as 27. There can be more. So I'm just writing this only. You can you can just uh, try that at home and get more answers if they are. Right, that's up to you. What is the least even prime number? Right, now what do you mean by a prime number children? Numbers which are divisible only by one and by itself. So, what is the least one? Least one is, least means the smallest. Smallest even prime number. It should be even also and it should be Small also, the smallest one. Okay. Now look at here. Prime number. Right. So what is the smallest prime number? 2. Is this even? Yes. This is divisible by 2 without any remainder. So 2 is the answer for the question. Right. So I hope all your queries and the doubts are very uh, clearly defined. Okay. Right, clarify. Fine. So let's go for the next slide. Right, now we learnt odd numbers, even numbers, prime numbers and composite numbers. Let's move on to square numbers. Square numbers. The word says, the name itself gives a definition for square numbers. Right, so what do you mean by a square number? Numbers which can be arranged or formed, which can be, which are having the formation of a square, right? Numbers which are having the formation of a square are 
square numbers. Now look at here. You know there are four corners in a square. So when you when you write two columns and two columns and two rows, it makes four. So four is a square number. You can see the type. So it's four. Four is a square number. Now two, two rows and two columns. Now let's go for three. After two it is three. Three rows and three columns. Three rows and three columns would make three into three is nine. Can you see there is a pattern? Okay. Let's move on to the next slide. So the definition says Numbers which can be arranged in a square formation are square numbers. Okay. And then you have to remember one thing. Now what did we, how did we get that special, uh, special uh, arrangement formation? By multiplying a, a number, number of uh, groups, no, number of columns by number of rows. Okay. So number of columns one, number of rows one. So 1 times 1 is 1. So 1 is the smallest square number. Right. Then after 1 the number is 2. 2 columns and 2 rows. 2 times 2 is 4. Right. Then number 3. 3 rows and 3 columns. 3 times 3 is 9. Then number 4. 4 rows and 4 columns. Let's see. Four rows and four columns. Right, you get a square. So one, four, nine, and sixteen are square numbers below twenty. Square numbers below twenty. Likewise, it goes on. After four, it is five. Five times five is twenty-five. Then six times six is 36. 7 times 7 is 49. 8 times 8 is 64. 9 times 9 is 81. 10 times 10 is 100. So, all these are square numbers. Right, look at here. In this table, you have to complete those. Right, it is given. And we discuss now, you have to complete. Now, first one. First serial, serial number means first square number. First square number is 1 into 1. Right? So 1 into 1 is 1. So the first square number is 1. You have to draw the diagram here. Only 1. Okay? Right. Second one. Second square number. 2 into 2. 2 into 2 is 4. So you have to show with that. 4. Likewise, please complete this table on your own. So that you will, uh, you will be sure about the square numbers. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Right, triangular numbers. Okay, this is also the uh, this is also shows the definition of the type of type of this number by the name itself. Now look at here, triangular. That means Numbers which can be formed or numbers which are having the formation of a triangle are known as triangular numbers. Alright, let's see. Now, can you remember when you were small you were drawing grapes, the bunch of grapes like this? Can you remember? You were drawing the bunch of grapes like this. So, the triangular number same thing, you have to just put this uh, great bunch opposite side, side, one top of the other. You have to turn it opposite way, like this. So, this is a, this is a square number, this is 3, 1, 2, 3. Then, if you have 2 at the bottom, you can get 3. 
at the bottom. So we write down in between these small circles here, dots here. So you get here the next one. Next uh, triangular number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the bottom line, first one, 1. We consider 1 as a triangular number. 1 is the smallest triangular number. So 1 is the smallest square number also. Right? So 1 is a triangular number, the smallest one. The next one, the first one, the first row, 1. The next one, the first row, it has 2. Then 3. Then 4. Last line in the diagram, you should get right 4 here. So this is the next one, right? This is the fourth, fourth triangular number because the bottom line is four. Fourth triangular number, bottom line is four. We count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten is the fourth triangular number. Like I hope you have, you have, you have some sort of an idea now about triangular numbers. Let's move on to the next slide. Right. Numbers which can be arranged in the formation of a triangle are triangular numbers, no problem. So look at here. 1. The bottom line is 2. Can you remember? We drew it like that. Bottom line is 2. So 2 plus 1 is 3. Right. Bottom line is 3 now. Third no. This is the first triangular number. This is the second triangular number. This is the third. So the bottom is 3. So you start with 3. 3 like this. So 3 plus third third triangle number. 3 plus 2 plus 1. Till 1 you are keep on adding. Right? Like this. 3 plus 2 plus 1. Third triangle number is 6. What about the fifth triangle number? Fifth. Fifth is 5 plus fifth. So 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. That is 15. Fifth triangular number is 15. Can you see the pattern of these uh, triangular numbers? So, when somebody asks you to write the 10th triangular number, 10th triangular number, how do you write it? Let me just keep on adding. 10 plus, 9 plus, 8 plus, 7 plus, 6 plus, 5 plus, 4 plus, 3 plus, 2 plus 1. Right, so let's see. 10 plus 9 is 19. 9 and 19 and 8 is 27. 27 and 7 is 40. Uh, 27 and 7 is 34. Uh, 34 and 6 is 40. 45, 45 and 4 is 49. 49 and 3 is uh, 49 and 3 is 52. 52 and 2 is uh, 54. 54 and 1 is 50. So what is the 10th triangular number? 55. Can you understand? Right. Let's move on to the next slide. Now, these are the calculations. These are the questions. Right. Before going to the questions, I have to tell you, I have to explain you one more thing, children. One more thing. Now, when you are given normal numbers like this, you can easily add by. Now, if they ask you to find the 6th triangular number, you can keep on adding by 6. 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, likewise. But, if they give you a large sequence like this, if they give you, calculate the 25th triangular number. How are you going to calculate the 25th triangular number? Can you keep on adding from 25? Yeah, it, uh, you can do it, but it takes too much of time. It takes so long, children. So because of that, the best thing that you have to guess about another method. Another method of finding this easily. So I'll tell you there is an equation. I'll give it, I'll, I'll explain you what it is n into n plus 1 over 2 n into n plus 1 over 2 this is the 
equation, the common equation of triangular numbers. When you get a large sequence to find out, you can easily apply it here and find the answer very easily. Now, when they ask you to find the 25th, 25th, N is the 25. 25th means N. So, we are going to apply here now. 25 is N, no? Children, 25 is N. So, 25 Again here for n instead of n you have to write 25 plus 1 over 2. So 25 into this bracket says into 25 plus 1 is 26 divide by 2. So we have to multiply 25 by 26 and divide it by 2. Right. So 25 by 26. 25 times uh, 4 is 100, 25 times 6 is 150, 15 is there, 25 times 2 is 50, 50 and 15, 50 and 15, 65, 650. Now you are going to divide 650 by 2, so the answer is 3, right, 320. Right. So the 25th triangular number is 320 children. Hope it's clear with you. Now you don't get this much larger, larger sequences. But since you can keep on adding till, uh, till uh, 10 or 12 I guess in this manner, in this method. But more than that if you have to calculate in the further sequence of triangular numbers it's better if you can apply this equation. Right, so let's go and move on to the exercises now. Right children, let's go for the exercise now. Uh, find the 12th square number. Right, square number. Can you remember children? Square numbers, right, are you have to multiply the same number of rows by the same number of columns. So you have to calculate the 12th one. So 12, we are multiplying 12 by 12. So the answer is 144. 144. Right. That is a 12th square number. Fine. Look at this. Question number 10. Right. They have given you the triangular number pattern. Right. This is the triangular number pattern. Calculate its 15th term, 15th term, right, now here you have 15th term, no? uh, you can uh, you can do it in the ordinary manner that we learned, 15th, so starting by 15 we are going to keep on adding, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10 plus, 9 plus, 8 plus, 7 plus, 6 plus, 5 plus, 4 plus, 3 plus, 2 plus, 1. Okay? Right. So, uh, from there we are going to keep on adding. 1 and 2 is 3, 3 and 3 is 6. 6 and 4, 10, 15, 21, 28, 28 and 8, 36, 36 and 9, uh, 36 and 9, uh, 45, 45, then 55, 55, 56, and 10, uh, 56 and 10, 66, 66 and 2, 68, 68 and 10, 78, 78 and 3, uh, 78 and 3, um, 81, 81 and 10, 91, 91 and 4, 95, 95 and 10, 105, 110, 110 and 10, 120. Right. So the, so the 15th triangular number is 120 children. Just try this down and see whether this is correct. 120 is the 15th triangular number. Okay. Next one. Calculate the 20th triangular number using its common term. 
Yes, this one what we expect we learned with just before. Right? We can apply this because 20 is a larger sequence, larger number. Okay, now according to this, what is n children? n is equal to 20. Why? We are going to calculate the 20 at triangular number. Right. So n into n plus 1 over 2. So n is 20. Open the bracket. Again, n is 20, 20 plus 1, close the bracket, over 2, okay. Don't, don't just miss up, don't miss any part of this equation when you substitute this. Substituting means writing, we are just applying 20 instead of n here. Instead of n, you are going to apply 20 and write all the rest. Write the rest of the equation, then no problem. Now we are going to solve it. First we are going to solve this part. Right, 20 is there. Since there is a bracket and there is no symbol here in front of bracket, we consider that as multiplication. Right, so 20 plus 1. We are going to solve what is in the bracket now. 20 plus 1 is 21. Divide by 2. Just go with the, just go down with the similar steps that I am explaining you. Don't go for any other way. Right. Now 2. Okay. Now can you, you can solve it in two different ways. You can either multiply these two and divide it by 2 at once. Right. If not, you can simplify this. To simplify, you can, you can see it here. What is above the division mark and below the division mark? If this number is divisible fully by 2, you can simplify this and half it out. So you can divide this by 2. How many 2's are there in 12 children? There are 10. And you cut this down. There is 1, 2 here. Okay. So there is nothing here. When you divide something by 1, there is nothing to be divided. Just you have to multiply these two and write the answer now. So 10 times 21, when you multiply a number by 10, you have to just write the 0 at the end and write the previous number. So 21. So the answer is 210. So 210 is the 20th triangular number. Okay. Right, the last one. Peter says that, 12th one, Peter says that a square number can be formed by the summation of Relating consecutive triangular numbers. What do you mean by consecutive? Consecutive means close by. Now when you write this is about the triangular numbers. No? If you write the triangular number, the first one is 3. Second triangular number is, first one, first triangular number is 1. Second one is 3. Then 6, 10, 15, 21. 28, likewise it is going on, right, just, I just wrote, wrote it in, uh, in order to explain you the consecutive. Now what are the consecutive, what is a consecutive, what are, uh, what is a consecutive number of number 3, what are the consecutive numbers? 6 and 1 are consecutive numbers of number 3, right. When you get number 10, what are the consecutive numbers of 10? 15 and 6, right, close by 1s, these are the close by 1s. Hope it's clear, right? So this says, a square number can be formed by the summation. What is summation? Addition. Right? A square number can be formed by the addition. Summation is addition of relating consecutive triangular numbers, right? Now in simple terms, what does Peter say? Peter say that when you add, when somebody add two close by triangular numbers, and when you add two close by uh, triangular numbers, a square number is formed with shapes. Now we have to check whether it is true or false first. Right? Do you agree with the statement? Prove your answer with an example. So we have to use an example and we have to check whether what Peter says in simple terms correct or wrong. If it is correct, we can say yes, I agree and then you can prove your answer by using the example. Let's see to that now. Uh, 
or cleaning the rest. Okay, right. Peter says that a square number, right? Now we will say close by ones. Now we know one and three are close by or consecutive triangular numbers. So we will add one and three is the smallest one. Let's go for simple, the smallest numbers that are possible so that we can easily solve this out. So 1 and 3 are the close by small triangular numbers. So we are adding two triangular numbers. Okay. We'll see. 1 and 3 would become 4. Now we'll see here. 1 is the first triangular number. 3 is the second triangular number. Okay. So, 4. What about 4? 4 means 2 times 2. 2 times 2 means the second. This is the second square number. So, by this, what, what is clear for you now? Right? So, when you add 3 consecutive, or when you add 2 consecutive close by triangular numbers, automatically you get a Square number. So, is Peter correct? Yes, Peter is correct. I hope it's clear with you. So, we can say that as the answer. Yes, I agree with this statement. Yes, I agree. Yes, I agree. Okay, children. So, so let's complete this table. Right? This is like the summary of the lesson. Right? Odd numbers, even numbers, prime numbers, composite numbers, square numbers and triangular numbers, all are there. Right. So, I will look at the first number here, number 1. Okay. Now, we will see number 1, whether it is an odd number or even number. Right. All the types. If they are belonging to the types, we are going to put a tick there. Right. As a summary of the lesson. So, number 1. Is 1 an odd number? Yes. Even number? No. Prime number? No. Composite? No. Please remember, one is not either a prime number or a composite number. Square number? Yes. Triangular number? Yes. One is a first square number and the first triangular number. So, one can be considered as an odd number, square number and a triangular number only. Hope it's clear. So, we will go to number 12. Number 12. Is number 12 an odd number? No, because the last digit is 2. 2 is even, right? So it's an even number. Is it a prime number? No, it has more factors, right? So therefore 12 is a composite number. Is 12 a square number? A square number, can you say like 4 times 4? 3 times 3 is 9, no. 4 times 4 is 16. No. So, 12 is not a square number. Triangular number? No. Right? 10. You can consider triangular numbers and one as 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21 and 28. So, 12 is not there either. So, 12 can be considered as an even number and a composite number both. Right? 15. Is 15 an odd number? Yes, because 5, the last digit, is an odd number. Yes. Even? No. Prime? No. Because 15 have more factors than, uh, I mean, 15 is divisible by 1 and by itself and many other factors also. Therefore, we can consider 50 as a composite number. 15 can be divisible by 3 and by 5 also. That's why. Right. Square number? No. Because 4 times 4 is 16. 3 times 3 is 9. You can't consider, consider it, as a, it as a square number. But triangular number? Yes. Fifth triangular number. Right? Because uh, uh, what do you call 15. Right? So 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 15. So 15 is a triangular number. Right. So, 15 is an odd number, composite number and a triangular number. Likewise, you can try the last two on your own. Right? I hope it's clear. And furthermore, children, you can 
complete the exercise as well for the practice. Please turn to page number 38. Page number 38. In your maths part 2 book. Right? And complete question number 1 and question number 2. In the miscellaneous exercises. Right. Hope that you learn the, uh, this lesson and enjoy it very well. Thank you children and may God bless you.